So today we are going to be looking at applying inequalities. Uh, so looking at word problems, real world situations, turning those into inequalities that we can use to help us solve. Um, and these are actually a lot more common than you might think. Um, the following phrases are ones that can translate into inequalities. So for example, if you hear the word at least, no less than, um, that means the greater than or equal to symbol. If you hear at most or no more than, that means less than or equal to. More than, obviously, would go with greater than. Both of those would be the greater than symbol. And then less or fewer than is the less than symbol. So not all things in life have to be exactly a certain amount. They could be at least a certain amount or at most. Um, and that's what we're going to look at. So I ask you to translate the following phrases into algebraic inequalities. So let me get a better color here. First, the temperature will be no more than 65 degrees today. That's something you could hear the weatherman say on the news. Um, so let's use the variable T for temperature. And if the temperature is going to be no more than 65 degrees, that means it could be 65, but no more than that. It could be 65 or lower. So that would be, the temperature would have to be less than or equal to 65. Secondly, LeBron will score at least 30 points in the game tonight. So that means if he's scoring at least 30 points, he's gonna score 30 or more, okay? Nothing less. So let's use the variable P for points. And the amount of points that he's going to score is going to be at least 30. So it's going to be greater than or equal to 30. Lastly, you can only spend $50 or less on a new pair of shoes. So you go to the mall, you have your $50, that's all you can spend. So the amount of money that you can spend, I'm going to use the variable S for amount you can spend, needs to be less than or equal to $50. Okay, you don't have any more than that, so the amount you spend could be all 50 or anything less than that. All right, so those were just some basic phrases that you translate into inequalities that you don't have to solve for. On the back, we're gonna go through some examples where you'll set up the inequality and use that to help you solve to get to this answer. So if you remember back to when we wrote equations, um, we looked at word problems and turned them into equations, this is going to be very similar. And really there's not a method to the madness, there's not like a set process that we use. Um, really the only thing that you should start by doing is defining the variable, figure out what we're solving for. Now we're going to set up the inequality instead of an equation, and then solve and lastly, interpret the solution set. If you get an answer like x is greater than five, state in words what that means. So, first one, Keegan has 36 books. He wants to get some more, but his bookcase can fit at most 55. How many more books can he get? So the question, what's unknown is how many more books he can get. Um, so I'm gonna use the variable m for how many more books he can get. And then from there, read, reread the problem and try and set up or build your inequality. So he has 36 books. He wants to get some more, so he's gonna add some more to that amount, I don't know how much, but that's what the variable represents. And this amount that he has needs to be less than or equal to 55, because that's all he has room for on his bookcase. Okay, so here is the inequality. Let's solve it. Okay, we want to get rid of that positive 36 by subtracting 36 on both sides. And that would leave us with our answer m is less than or equal to 55 minus 36, which is 19, I think. Yeah, 19.
19. So that means the amount of, or how many more books he can get needs to be less than or equal to 19. So in other words, he could get 19 more books or less. And that's what I mean by interpret the solution set. All right, going on to number two, Keith has $500 in a savings account at the beginning of the summer, and he wants to have at least 200 in the account by the end of the summer. He withdraws 25 each week for food, clothes, etc. We want to know how many weeks he can withdraw money from his account. So that last question is telling us what's missing, what the variable is. We want to know how many weeks he can withdraw from his account. So I'm going to use W for weeks he can withdraw. Um, and just a reminder, withdraw means to take money out. So he's starting with 500 in his account. He wants to have at least 200. He's withdrawing 25 each week from this amount. So from this number, he's subtracting 25 per week. So 25 times the number of weeks that he's withdrawing that. We want this amount to be at least 200. So we want this to be greater than or equal to $200. Um, and hopefully you're able to get to this point too after reading and rereading the inequality. Hopefully you can kind of see the connection there. From here, we're gonna solve, okay? I wanna start by getting rid of this 500 because it's the number that's not with the variable. So I subtract 500 on both sides. And that would leave us with, those would cancel out, would leave us with negative 25W is greater than or equal to negative 300. From here, W is being multiplied by negative 25. So to undo that, we want to divide both sides by negative 25. And hopefully you recognize this. I have been highlighting when this happens. When you divide both sides by a negative, that's going to flip the sign around. It's going to make it switch. Those cancel out. I'm left with W. This switches because I divided both sides by a negative. And it gives us our answer. W is now less than or equal to um, negative 300 divided by negative 25 is 12. Yeah, hopefully. So W is less than or equal to 12. This means that he can withdraw money for 12 weeks or less in order to have that $200. Which is exactly what I just wrote. He can withdraw for 12 weeks or less. All right, going on to the next one. Debbie has at most $60 to spend on clothes. She wants to buy a pair of jeans for $22 and spend the rest of her money on t-shirts. If each t-shirt costs $8, then how many can she buy? So this is the unknown. We wanna know how many shirts she can buy um, or t-shirts. So I'll use letter T for t-shirt she can buy. So she has at most 60. So the amount of money she spends needs to be less than or equal to 60. So we already know she bought jeans for $22. She wants to buy additional t-shirts for $8 each. So we're going to add $8 to that amount times however many shirts she bought. Okay, if she bought five shirts, we'd have to multiply eight times five and add that to the 22 to get the total amount she's spending. Again, we want this amount to be less than or equal to 60. 
She doesn't have any more than that, so the amount she spends needs to be less than or equal to it. So there is the inequality. And from there, we'll solve. Start by subtracting 22 on both sides. Leaves us with 8t is less than or equal to uh, 38. And then from there, divide both sides by 8. We're going to have a decimal here. t is less than or equal to 38 divided by 8, which I don't know. It's 4.75. So that's your answer, but this is where it becomes especially important to interpret your answer because this means the number of t-shirts she can buy is less than or equal to 4.75. You can't buy 0.75 of a shirt, even if it's like, never mind, I was gonna make a crop top joke, but never mind. Um, when we interpret our answer, you can't buy that amount of a shirt, so she'd actually have to buy four shirts or less. She can buy four shirts or less. All right, last one. Alex sells books online. She, this is a girl version of Alex, um, she makes a flat profit of $2 per book, but needs to pay $4 per day to PayPal for using the app on her website. How many books does she need to sell to make at least $120 per day? So in the question that tells us the unknown, we want to know how many books she needs to sell to meet this goal. So I'm going to use the variable B to represent books needed to sell. So she's going to make $2 per book, so she's going to make $2 times however many books she sells. But no matter how much she makes here, we have to subtract off $4 um, for the, the PayPal fee. Okay. So we want this amount to be at least $120, so we want it to be greater than or equal to $120. So that would be the inequality that we can use to figure out our answer. And from here, get rid of the minus 4 by adding 4 on both sides, leaving us with 2b is greater than or equal to 124. From here, we would divide both sides by 2, maybe. Divide by 2, divide by 2. So B is greater than or equal to 124 divided by 2, which is 61, I think, 62. So the number of books she needs to sell needs to be greater than or equal to 62. So she needs to sell 62 books. Or more. All right, so there we have it. Again, I know these are a little bit more complicated. There's not really a set method, but just read, reread the problem, underline the important information, and do your best to build the inequality to help you solve.